The JN Foundation and the USAID have partnered in an important initiative that seeks to create dynamic and empowering opportunities for Jamaica's social enterprises, or essentially those committed to the social and economic well-being of communities, groups, and individuals. It's called the Social Enterprise Boost Initiative, or SEBI. Now, since May 24, on the Achievers, we have been carrying interesting excerpts from SEBI's late April discussion dubbed Let's Talk Social Economy Matters. On our last program, Director of Social Entrepreneurship at the UWI, Dr. K. Knife, posited that if Jamaica does not take advantage of its geographical position as a hub of commerce, when money begins to flow, it will be outsiders, good and bad, who will benefit if Jamaicans do not build legitimate community-oriented businesses to take advantage of such windfall opportunities. Dr. Knife suggests that opportunities exist and Jamaican community entrepreneurs should begin to examine and act on them. Good. About seven of the fastest growing countries are residing in Africa. Africa, which is just across the waters here. Are we thinking about anything like that? Are you thinking that, okay, it's a social enterprise, so we do not engage in export? You have to shift your lens. Yes, you have to shift your lens. If you're in a community that is doing processing of fruits, dehydrated fruits, was research showing about the phytochemicals that are in tropical fruits? And where is it demanded mostly? It's not in Jamaica. So why is that your market, your target market is in Jamaica? No, because it's a welfare program. Community can't make money. Only private people alone can make money. What's the shift? The thinking. He suggests that such a shift in thinking requires looking at community-based trade within the diaspora. You have hundreds, thousands of persons in the diaspora who want to contribute to the Jamaican economy, not only in the social sector, but also in the traditional sector. But they are strongly active in that sector as well. And I don't think that we are sufficiently tapped into to that sector. We need to broaden our own lenses. It's not only about remittance. So there are implications. Here we are saying the implications. Demand for skilled laborers. So many different services. So those youths who are under the CSJP program, are we retooling them now to do underwater welding? Are we making connections with people in Guyana to say we can get green art and purple art and all those lumbers that can be used for construction in seas? Are we doing anything like this? So we have people, tools and skills, skill sets, but we need to do some retooling. Well, a lot of work is being done by Dr. Pinock or by the Maritime Institute. Yes, and under some of the CSJP program, I know that persons from the communities are given scholarships to go out there and do some programs as well. But it makes no sense you give those persons mental tools and no physical tools. So a lot of use of training, but no equipment. Yes? And so you have a very trained mind who know what they can do with no equipment. They become frustrated. Become distrusting of programs. So you are saying that the youth who is truly at risk are the ones who are not prepared for the entrepreneurial revolution that is taking place. The social enterprise expert says research shows that the impact of social enterprise is quick. Here's what research is showing. Social enterprises tend to have greater impact in a shorter space of time than traditional micro, small and medium enterprises. And we are here promoting a lot of micro, small, medium enterprises. The social enterprises also experience growth within the first year of operation. Usually MSMEs tend to experience growth in two to three years. I mean, a lot of things happen all year. So we must realize that if you're going to have a development strategy, you need to recognize where the growth is taking place and invest within those growth areas. When we are done the research, look again at the organizational vulnerability and how effective they are in creating social value. I mean, the information came out which shows that they are not so good at creating social value. Worse at measuring the value. And part of the reason it's not as effective as it should be is because 
you do not have the information, you have not recorded your own information so you can monitor your own behavior. You haven't. Again, because we weren't thinking about this as, 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 a, as an enterprise. Surely the social enterprise sector, which has great growth potential, needs serious capacity building and reorientation in important areas such as record keeping. That concludes our three-part series on the Social Enterprise Boost Initiative and how building up more viable social enterprises in Jamaica could mitigate some of the island's serious challenges which cannot be addressed by government alone.